new age of aviation. Air motor flying to me is like a time-released adrenaline rush. We're just hanging out, having a blast. In this sport, there are risks. It takes what some people would define as crazy. First time was terrifying. I was sure that I was going to die. There are these pilots now that are coming together and we're basically forming our own flight club. Sometimes you go on cross-country adventures. Other times, there's competition. add a motor and you add some testosterone, we all want to get out there and see who's the best. Woo! This is the purest form of flight. This is crank and bank and get out there and run into the sky and go fly. My name is Heidi Lee and I am the COO of Blackhawk Paramotor. Blackhawk Paramotor is a U.S. manufacturer of powered paragliding equipment. Engines, frames, gliders, you name it. So we're kind of a one-stop shop. And I'll be honest, I got into it because I met the owner on Match.com. If you look at Blackhawk's position in the industry, we're number one. I get calls all the time, oh, you and your husband are great, we love watching your videos. And the first thing I say is, he's not my husband. We pretty much figured out over time that we make better business partners than we do a couple. Oh, sometimes, you know, we butt heads here and there. One will admit that one was right or vice versa. You're just coming in, you keep up your speed. No, you know, I, you're I, chopping the throttle too much. No, Stay Mike, low. I barely do this and it's, it's choop, okay. choop. Often, neither or is right. Heidi Lee is this operation. She's our den mother, so to speak. The girl could basically fly anything. I would rather fly with her than anybody else. Let's look at it that way. You know, I started here almost seven years ago, and it was a very small niche. Within three, four years, it, it just took off. My name is Mark Amundsen. I'm from Green Bay, Wisconsin. I've been told my entire life, you're crazy. My mom said if we would have collected anything growing up, it would have been your emergency room bracelet. It's not a form of craziness, it's we just push the limits. I teach high school and college, and my students ask, why are you so excited? It's because I just flew to 1,500 feet or 2,000 feet before I came to school. I drank my coffee, I flew up to 1,000 feet, I shut my motor off, I glided down, I got home, and I came to school to teach you guys. Mark and Elena are the cutest flying couple. My name is Elena Dickerson. I'm from Asheville, North Carolina. I've been flying because of Mark Honeycutt. I am Mark Honeycutt, and I'm a medevac pilot in the military. We pick up injured people and take them to hospitals or we take them from hospital to hospital. You guys have a good one. I'll see you later. I actively try to make YouTube videos once a week. There's cool ideas that I come up with and I try to implement them and bring enjoyment to other people with that. I guess I've got a pretty good following. I'm chasing some sort of feeling when I fly because I fly helicopters and when I'm flying helicopters, I'm in the sky thinking, wow, I wish I could be flying paramotors right now. On our first day, he actually put me in a harness. I've been teaching her to fly about as long as I've been dating her. First thing we did within like 30 minutes to an hour of seeing each other, she paraglided in some random field which a policeman kicked us out of. <laughs> Nick is fearless. When Nick's in the air, you never know what's gonna happen. That's the type of people it's fun to hang out with. He's just bold. I've been flying paramotors for 13 years. Done several thousand flights, about 1,200 hours. First time was terrifying. I was sure that I was gonna die. And it was one of the most amazing moments of my life. One of the guys in our group, Nuno, he is considered the MacGyver of paramotoring. I mean, this guy can make anything. I was born and raised in Portugal and I got into building because at the time I could not afford this type of equipment. Nuno is a different breed. He doesn't want to just get out the credit card and buy his gear. He wants to see how it works. He's an innovator. He wants to make new motors and he wants to fly them himself. So it's awesome to be able to have a friend that is that talented. The joke with Nuno is that, you know, we could drop him in the woods anywhere in the world and he'd fly out in five days. He makes all of his own stuff. I think he'd mine his own ore if he could. Out of me, I started developing some skills, getting into the mechanics of it. After that, there was no stop. Machine after machine, every machine better than the last until today. 
I think what Heidi does is really cool. I definitely think there's a lot that I could learn from Heidi. It'll be nice to talk to another woman about flying. When I first got into the sport, I saw zero women. It's really picked up in steam and we are seeing more and more women get into the sport. I've met a lot of different women now through my channel. I think it's really cool to see women fly. And it's the same thing at fly-ins. What's great about Blackhawk is that we host these huge fly-ins. A fly-in is where people just get together and the community flies together. The greatest part about paramotoring to me is the people that I've met. In order to do this sport, it takes a different type of personality. The sport seems to attract interesting people that want to do something more than an average life. There's a kind of bond between people who want to live like that. Sometimes you go on cross-country adventures with other people. Other times there's competition. Paramotor pilots in general are pretty competitive people. When you add a motor and you add some testosterone, usually we all want to get out there and see who's the best. This week we got to fly down low and we're going to be doing an accuracy challenge. Closest person to the target wins. Excited, just I went to let it go and it wouldn't come off. Well, I was trying something different, chucking it behind me, and I had too many variables, but it was fun. <laughs> Picked it up, just didn't get it in the hay bales. <laughs> Woo, that was exciting. Timing, I'm a little behind Mark, but accuracy, I think I got it in there the first time I looked back and I think it was in there. In this sport, you know there are risks. Oh, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I <laughs> I'm learning something new and it's taking me out of my comfort zone. I can't figure it out. I can't figure it out. Tensions are high. I sat and thought about it for a while because every time stuff like this happens, mm -hmm. I'm, I want to like go and decompress and be like, okay, what did I do wrong? What could I have done better? And what's working against me? Mm -hmm. But I'd wish I'd bailed sooner. If it doesn't feel right, mm -hmm. it's not right. Abort. Right. Right. So if it looks like shit, it's shit. Oh, I can't say that. I'm really sorry. Okay. <laughs> yeah. If something doesn't feel right, just abort because you can always reset up. I have to look at these things as like, really good lessons mm -hmm. because all the hard lessons are what make you i think a better pilot absolutely i've never flown with a woman and i know eventually we will yes. get to but <laughs> so how was it i have to ask because my now ex but my boyfriend taught me how to fly your boyfriend taught you how to fly how was that experience because mine wasn't very pleasant oh uh, yeah <laughs> you know i'm like this <laughs> It's really nice to talk to somebody yes. else who's been <laughs> because it wasn't pleasant all the time right um, but I really think that it, it served the relationship actually because we were a new couple mm -hmm. and we had to figure out really early on how to communicate mm -hmm. and work through things without right. snapping at each other. Right. Not everybody gets that. It's, right. it, it was definitely a very stressful thing, but it was good. I seriously wouldn't want to, wanted to learn from anybody else because 
I have had people comment on my videos just how it's refreshing for them to see somebody not just being successful and awesome at paramotoring all the time. Everybody's different here, different backgrounds, different flight styles, pretty awesome time. When we first did the foot dragging things, it went successful for me, but then I just wanted to shake it up a little bit and try to toss the cone in between my lines. <laughs> Tossing it between your lines is a risky thing just That's in general idea. because the gap is like, what, this big? Yeah, you would see me holding it out there and, I'm, and I was practicing right before I get there. See, that's why we'd all be like, no, 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 and he's looking up at the lines, making sure he's not throwing it. It made it a little different, more challenging. I think it's really cool that everybody gets along super well because personalities are all different, and I think it's been a really great experience. I can't wait to do this again. I think we're going to have some adventures together. I can't wait to go, go figure out what our next, our next trip is going to be. The challenge today was pretty difficult and uh, just coming into it, hooking the foot on there the first time, I was surprised. And then to drop it in the, the square on the first shot was awesome. You did a good job, Mark. Yeah. Um, yeah. Looking forward to going new places, trying new things, and hopefully continuing on this crazy adventure. Heidi and I work here, and sometimes we maybe take this place for granted. I'm really proud to be able to share it with some great people. You know, as many flines as we've hosted, as many students that have come through our school, I felt like the last couple of days, it was family. I'll get you next time. <laughs> I do not. I've really been thinking about where else or what else we can do. There's a lots of possibilities for future adventures together.